Hello, hello everybody. Thank you very much for joining us this uh, afternoon or evening if you are on the other side of the world. Um, we are so honored to have the opportunity to come once again into your homes, to your workplace, to your life with this word of God today. Uh, I'm so honored and I take it, I don't take it lightly. Um, I thank God for every single one of you. And I thank God for every single one of you for this opportunity and this, um, yeah, we thank God for every, for this opportunity to reach out to you. Um, if you're watching us, I would like you to share, I would like you to invite someone to join us. Um, I know your life will not be the same. Yeah. I know your life will be transformed by this um, telecast. telecast. Um, today is a special day in our lives. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, and it starts today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tomorrow is a special day in our lives. and. Uh, we thank God for for us to share this day, uh, this eve of that day with you. Um, tomorrow will be it is at least six years uh, of our marriage, um, and the Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been very, very faithful with us. The Lord has dealt with us. Um, it was a journey to the unknown, a journey to the. Uh, to a place where we had no knowledge, but God was faithful. He kept us. He He led us through every single day. It has not been an easy one, but the the great thing about God is, uh, if He is in something, He makes it better. easier. He makes it better. He gives you the grace to weather every storm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you very much, my brother. Uh, my sister Inshra, Inshraba for what for joining us today. My sister Baini and um, Miss Anne Mar uh, Mary McCarty. God Richard bless you for joining Thank us. Um, Miss Ama, Mami Ama Santua Frimpon Enin. Yay, God Richard bless every single one of you. I'd like you to invite someone. Invite. I'd like you share. to invite someone and share this. Um, it's going to be very powerful, very revelational to you guys yeah. especially those that are looking to marry and those that just married you know especially in our culture now um you know most of the time when we marry we have adults like that haven't really experienced our culture giving you advice but i think sometimes it helps if you have somebody who is in this culture you know in this time or era also to advise you about the far that we've experienced and the things the the secrets that the holy spirit has given us to help. Oh wow! Okay, wait. Mm -hmm. uh, it says Facebook was not responding. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Yeah. Let's pray. Before we go any further, shall we uh, share a word of prayer? Father, we thank you, yes, Holy Lord. Spirit. We yes. thank you. You are all merciful. You are all wonderful. You are all powerful. In you, O oh God, we start this service. In your name, we start this service. In your name. Uh, we open this up. We pray that you shall abide in this congregation. You shall, your presence shall be filled. Your power shall be filled. Your mind shall be revealed. I pray that your fullness shall be revealed, O oh God, in our gathering today. You alone take glory. You alone take honor. Amen. You alone, O oh God, receive all the praise. Amen. Father, I pray and I permit every thought, every imagination, O oh God, under your captivity. Yes, I pray, O oh God, that you shall use this as a medium Amen. to change, as a medium to transform, as a Amen. medium to build up your people. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Yeah, so six years ago in this time, we were, it's, strangely, it's also a Friday. We were preparing, yeah. getting ready um, to um, to go marry. So all the stuff that you can think about, making sure that the cake is ready, making sure that your bridesmaids and your groomsmen have all their clothes, calling on them to go pick up their suit before before um, the, the, the shop closes. Um, these these guys were so mm -hmm. much with me. They were so much, um, so much, so much important in my life. They were so so very helpful. Uh, some of these brothers are also married now, and they are living a very glorious life. 
uh, in, in the kingdom. Um, one thing I would like to share with looking back six years from now, uh, looking back six years uh, then, um, I, there are a few things that I have experienced which I think is, is, is not um, compared to most some marriages that are 40 years and 50 years into marriage. Uh, there's just something that I have learned which I believe um, is also applicable because every, every relationship is different. Um, every relationship is different. Every, every two people in a relationship is different. They can be in the, just the environment alone makes it different. Um, so um, there's a few things that I would like to share. It's, it's very revelational. And at that time, before, before I was not married, I did not, I understood that, those scriptures in a certain way. And after married, being, being married for six, time, uh, six years, I have a different, um, different meaning. And, and it speaks to me in a different way, which I believe can also help everybody, anybody out there, whether you are in marriage already, if you've been married already, or you are preparing to get married, or if you desire not even to be married. Uh, I believe that it could also be a blessing unto you. Um, one thing that I, 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 I did and I, and I had experience in this journey, um, I thank God so much for my wife for what God had made her and who, who she is in God. Um, she had been a great, a great anchor in my walk with the Lord and in my walk in life in general. She's been a great prov uh, provider and also a helper in this journey with God, uh, she, 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 she brings the best out of me. Uh, places where I am weak, uh, one thing I have realized that she is very, very strong in those areas. I am more of an, of an uh, introvert who like to be by myself. I'm more <laughs> fine now when I'm, when I'm by myself and, and, and not, not when I'm, I'm out there. Um, I'm more fine now. I'm, I like to reserve. I like to I like I like processes. I like to I like to structure things. I like to put things in order. I like to I don't like chaos. I don't function well in in the midst of chaos. I I like quietness. I like the the serenity, and and I believe in those areas. That is when my the best of me comes out. So um, I try as much as possible to to create that environment around me. Uh, but but when I met her, when I, I got married with her, I realized there is a part of her that makes her really, that, that, that is really, really strong in areas where there is chaos. She's able to think on her feet and know what, what needs done in time, even in the midst of the, in the, in the chaos, which, which I, I take time. I'm like, you know what, let's, <laughs> let's, this, let's weather this, this storm for a little bit. Let's Please not decide. Let's, let's not decide this at, at, this, at this time. Let's not decide on this at this time. Let us, wait. you know, let us give this person a time. Let us give this situation a time. And, and I realized um, it had not, uh, it really, sorry, sorry. Uh, it, really, uh, it really helped me. Um, being able to present things to her and and have a look, uh, have an, a, a second opinion on what I'm thinking and the things that I'm going through, especially in my businesses, um, I, I get employees, you get people that you are dealing with, you get organizations that you are dealing with and relating with, and and sometimes you are you are pushed to that place where you have to decide whether to move on or not to move on, whether to to let this person go or not this, let this person go, and and she's been my second person, second, second eye that is able to, my third eye that is able to help me direct uh, in mm. most of these decisions. And I thank God so much for her life. The Bible says in Proverbs 8 in the verse 22, he says, whoever finds a wife finds a treasure. I'm, re I'm reading from the New, New Living Translation. He says that whoever finds a wife finds a treasure. And he obtains favor. the favor of God. The favor of God. Um, Proverbs, um, Solomon, as a man of many wives and many concubine, concubines. Uh, this is one thing that he had experienced. And, 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 and he, he, in his walk with God, he realized that anyone that he had related with, or even in him, his own life, he said, whoever finds a wife, he finds a treasure. 
Uh, most of the times, the treasures that we find in life, if you look at in, the, in our mining sector and, 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 and places like that, treasures does not usually come in their perfect form. Every treasure you find, sometimes it may be things that you may be tempted to walk away from. Mm. Or it may be things that you may be tempted to look at the outward appearance and mm. say, there is nothing good that could come out of this thing. Mm. But he said that whoever finds a wife, remember he did not say whoever finds a girlfriend. He says whoever finds a wife, he did not say whoever finds somebody else's wife in a relationship. He says whoever finds a wife, a wife that God has ordained for you. That thing may not come right, which means that sometimes in, in our walk in, in life, as we, we purpose, especially with men, to find a wife to marry, sometimes these people, these wives that we, we may, that person you may come across may not be in the place that you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. But as Paul said, he says that as a man, you should nurture your wife. You should, you should, you should build her up. You should, you should, you should, you should bring the best out of her through the washing of the, the of the word of God. So the word of God as mercury, as a chemical that is used in washing gold, it's used in washing diamond. When you, you apply the word of God in your relationship, in your dealing with this woman, in your dealing with this woman that you're working with, in your dealing with your wife, as you apply the word of God, which is the chemical, which is able to refine and to make and to take off the impurities and the things that are that 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 that, that seems to diminish and seems to and seems to overcover the glory of that woman, as you apply the word of God into this person's life, beloved. This person one day will blossom Amen. to be whoever you want them to be or whoever you desire this person to be. Amen. The woman that God brings to you may never be the one that you desire. There is a saying that you do not, you do not even know people until you live with them. Uh, with me, with working with my wife, I knew her as somebody that was very prayerful. Uh, one thing that I could testify, she, she loved God. She loved to pray. And we met, we met at a prayer, a prayer meeting. And uh, we we're both prayerful. We will spend time in prayer. We'll wake up. We'll wake, she became our, my prayer partner. We'll wake up early morning, like 4 o'clock in the morning. We'll go to Assemblies of God Church here in Columbus, Ohio. We'll be at the back of the church praying. When some people are asleep, we'll be praying. We'll be praying into things uh, concerning the church. We'll be praying into things concerning our marriage. We'll be praying into things concerning our, our children. We'll be praying into our business. We'll be praying into, marriage, into our relations, into our, our ministries. We'll be praying for, for men of God that have imparted in our lives. And we'll be calling. We'll be calling some of these people. Uh, we'll be calling that the giftings that God has bestowed upon them in relations in their marriage, in their ministry, will be claiming those things, believing God that those things that we say will one day be made manifest in our, in our lives. There are things about my wife that I did not know until I lived with her. And I realized that those things were coming up. But one thing I did not do, one thing I did not do was to, was to shun her or to, or to, or to look, her, look at her with a bad intent or look at her demeaning her or or, or looking her at her as of less of a person. No, but in places or in times where we did not agree on certain things, we will let the word of God be our yardstick. Amen. We will present it in the light of God's word. And some of the times, of some, most of the times, I'm, I'm like, okay, this thing that I'm even looking at it, I am actually the person in the wrong. Because when the word of God is broken down, when you start breaking down the word of God in, your, in the context of marriage, in the context of relationship, is then that you yourself, the skills that you are watching the person, the eye that you are watching the person in judgment, it is then that those things are revealed. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says that we all look in us in the mirror, we are our images or how we, how we see ourselves is being made brighter. Hallelujah. Because Amen. you do not see who you are. Until you present it in the context of God's word. Mm -hmm. It's the same in a relationship. Sometimes we may blame, we may blame the other person for what they are not able to do. It's some, usually you don't even look at what they do. But you look at what they are not able to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what they are not. That is what you usually look at. What they are not. Why is she the one? Why is she always, always, what does she always have to 
always have to apply or, or get the toothpaste from the from the tip. When I always, as a single guy, I always go to the bottom and press on on the toothpaste and get it the way I want it to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and that is, as a single person, if you leave, you created an environment, you created a space for you that, that you are so comfortable with. Why, why does she always have to spend so much time in the bathroom? When, when, when does she, why, why should I always be the one sitting in the car waiting for her to get ready for church? When she says she will be back in five minutes. I'll be out there in five minutes. I'll be out there in two minutes. Hallelujah. That is the nature of of women. The Bible says that we should dwell with Don't them with, with understanding. understanding. You have to understand how women act, how women think, how women, how women, how women act, how women think. Most of these things as a man, they do it for your own glory. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is not coming for a church with spots, but he washes, he he glorifies himself through his church, which is his wife. So the, your glory as a church or as a, as, as, as a wife is not for any man, but as, your, as a wife, as you look better, you bring glory to your husband. Yeah. And when, when I sometimes I will have a misunderstanding on why she is spending so much time, we will sit down and look at what the scripture says concerning that. And we realize, you know, if she spent that extra time looking good in the mirror, waiting so that she looked better, Outwardly, as a man, it is for my own glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Very soon I'll let my wife come in, but I have one more thing. He says, whoever finds a wife finds treasure. And he obtains the favor from God. There are three le- about three levels of favor which a man can receive in life. And also a woman can receive in life. There is a favor from God that is designated especially for men that are in marriages. There is a favor, it doesn't matter how much years or how much days that you spend in faith, in prayer, in fastings, you will not obtain that favor until you walk that marriage. walk of marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, the verse 52, it says that Jesus Christ grew in stature and in wisdom. Mm. And he obtained the favor from God and man. man. Jesus Christ, as he was in this world, he was here to redeem his wife, Mm -hmm. which is the church. And any time Jesus Christ walked as he grew, any time he took that measure... Spending that extra time wanting to be in the in the temple more because he, he, he realized the mission that God has given to him was coming close and he realized that the mission that God has for him was about redeeming uh, mankind who had who was fallen from grace. Anytime he applied his mind to walk in that there was a special favor that came upon him. A special favor that was revealed upon him. A favor that made him able to withstand any religious um, and any religious and any traditional mindset at that time. There was a certain favor that came him that was able to let him withstand even though the people that he was sent to were rejecting him. There was a special kind of favor that came over him that made that work easier for him. As a man... In marriage, if you set your mind up to redeem your wife through the word of God, no matter who this woman is, if the relationship is in line and is is recognized by God in marriage, there is a favor that comes over you that enables you to walk that walk without fear or trembling. It doesn't matter what a prophet may tell you that it is your wife that is not making you successful. It is your wife that is not is causing you to lose your business. It is your wife that is causing you to lose favor in the sight of people outside. It is your wife that is causing problems in your in 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 in, in, in your business. It doesn't matter what people say. If you decide and purpose in your heart to wash this woman by the word of God, to purge her by the word of God, to cleanse her by the word of God, to purify her by the word of God, with a mindset that you want to see the best out of her, come out out of her, there is a favor that God will give you. That that thing 
will be accomplished. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Most usually when we quote that scripture, we think, oh, he obtains favor from God. And that for that reason, money should fall on your lap. Doors of opportunity will fall on your lap. No, it does not always come. But it will always come when you see that woman and that woman's destiny as your responsibility. And you set in your heart that no matter what, I will make sure that this woman fulfill her destiny and her purpose in, in, in life through the word of God and you decide to wash her. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. And when you do that, the Bible says that we, once it's, it's in line with the kingdom of God, all other things, mm. all other things means all other things. You gain your respect as a man in the community. You gain the favor from business associates. You gain your favor in the business place and in the marketplace as a man. You gain the favor to excel in business and in anything that you desire in life. Mm. You will not struggle. Amen. Everything you project in life, you will overcome it. Amen. When you set your heart out that this woman that God has brought to me, I will refine her. Mm. I will build her up. According to the will and according to the word of God. Amen. That is our mandate as mm. men in relationships and especially in marriages. Mm -hmm. That is our mandate as men of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. It does not matter how much ordinations you have had mm. as a minister. You can be a, a bishop, you can be an apostle, but if you fail at raising your wife, if you fail at edifying your wife, if you fail at building your wife up, you have failed in all that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the hand of God, the blessings and the favor of God, that invisible hand and that invisible power that will stand by your ministry to prosper and fight for your ministry to go up, you will not see that hand. Mm. You will eventually see there seems to be something that is fighting you. Like mm. you open one door, three doors shut before you. You go here, they, they reject you. You go, you see a lot of rejection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as a minister of God, if you're going through that in your, in your ministry, sit back and look at how it's you are treating your wife. Because if you cannot treat your wife as the way Christ treats the church and love your wife as the way Christ loved the church. There is no way he will commit his wife who is the his church. There's no way he will commit his wife who is the body of Christ unto you. Why? Because you have failed the at one the one he that he has wow, committed unto that you. That is powerful. Beloved, <laughs> I will have my wife take over. But if there is anything that wow. you did not learn, you did not experience today, it is Ooh, as a man, sunk into my heart. learn to love your wife. Hallelujah. Learn to cherish your wife. That is so learn powerful. to wash your wife mm. through the word of God. Learn to bring the impurity, mm, 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 mm. the things that are bad out of hell. Mm. You can only do that mm. through the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 Honey, is there anything you want yeah. to share? I, I want to repeat what he said. So you, if he said that, and if I had said it right, please call it. Mm. He said that if you are a minister... You are a person who are, who's doing anything, in, including even your purpose, because your purpose can be your your church, yes. and that, that is Christ. Jesus Christ's purpose is the church. That's why he came to die to reveal himself, mm -hmm. so that he can win the church unto him, his wife. Yes. So he's saying that if you can, if you're not succeeding in that era, it means that you are not you, uh, you have to go back and take a look of how you are treating your wife, because if you're not treating your wife right, there's no way he will help you do any. Other other thing so then every other thing becomes secondary your wife is your main purpose to bring her wash her to bring her especially if you are a pastor there's no way jesus christ will commit his wife to you if you're not treating your wife right yes that's pretty much what he's saying if you're a minister and if you're not treating your wife right there is no way jesus christ will commit his wife to you mm -hmm. because you are not treating the one that is given to you right mm -hmm. i feel like that is so powerful that is so powerful. That is so true. And even it applies to women. If I'm, if, as a minister, if I'm, I'm a minister, and if I'm not able to uh, do the things of God, if I'm not able to take care of you, there's no way he will commit my ministry to me. 
And most of the time, you realize that women that have those ministries mm -hmm. that struggle. They, they, they struggle when their marriages fall, their ministry also struggles because it goes hand in hand. And I feel like that is so powerful. But um, thank you so much, honey. That was yeah. so powerful yeah. what you shared here. What I want to talk about is six years of marriage. You know, um, it, it, it has not been an easy journey. And if there are people that are going through trials and tribulations in their marriage now, we I have um, we suffered an atopic and miscarriage, and these things are tough, especially if you're looking for children. I know that there are people watching us looking for children. You know, people that mm -hmm. have suffered miscarriage upon miscarriage upon miscarriage, people that are married, but then it seems like the marriage was fine, but now it's not. All of a sudden, things are, you know, in the left. Well, things are supposed to be in the right. Um, I want to address that aspect of marriage because um, as much as I would like to say that our marriage is wonderful and so everybody else's marriage is not that way, but I want to give um, the, the secrets that the, by seeking the Holy Spirit we have gotten and been able to avoid our marriage going into the south. Not that we don't have problems, but when we have them, the problems don't overcome us. That is, that is what I want to say, that whatever problems come, I don't see him as the enemy. Nothing comes to drive my husband away. Nothing comes to change my view of my Lord. You understand what I'm saying? And so I want to address that issue. Please, if you want to go ahead and share, go ahead and share. This will be a blessing to others as well. But um, it's important that you recognize each other's sacrifices. It's very, very important. You know, if recognition of sacrificing wasn't important, there is no way it, Cain will kill Abel. Recognition of sacrifices are very, very important. It is so important that it is what drove Cain to kill Abel. The Bible says that when Abel went and sacrificed um, his, uh, his fruits and stuff, mm -hmm. And, and go and Abel, uh, Cain went and sacrificed, Abel went and sacrificed. The Bible says that the Lord did not recognize Cain's sacrifice, but he recognized Abel's sacrifice. So recognizing of each other, recognition of sacrifices in the marriage is so important. You have to recognize each other's sacrifices. If you do not, you know, marriage is a journey of the unknown. It's a journey to the end. There is nothing in this world that you're doing that is longer than the, the marriage of, you know, you can go into ministry. But your ministry can end and you are still in marriage. You can be a doctor, but you're, you can retire and you will still be married. So once you marry, that is your most primary is till death do you part. You will stay married until you die. At least that's the, the reason most of us go into marriage. We stay in marriage until we die. Which means marriage comes before our purposes. Marriage comes before our occupation. In fact, it is out of marriage that your purposes are built. If you are, if you are really married and you have a right marriage and the marriage is ordained by God, it is out of your marriage that your purpose comes. So your marriage is first and foremost your, 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 your ministry, your destiny. It is where it is. So it is important that you recognize each other's sacrifice. Just as sacrifices is very important in the sight of God. In the same way, sacrifice, because this man, he's my Lord. You know what? Paul says that. And, and, and Mary loved a, a Sarah, a, 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 humbled himself before Abraham and called her his Lord. Just as we, the church calls Jesus Christ the Lord. This is my Lord. He is Mira. You and just as we sacrifice to the Lord. In the same way, I also sacrifice unto him. And he sacrificed unto me because Jesus Christ first sacrificed. He first died for us. You understand? And so a mar the marriage, please, if you want to write these things down, you can. Because some of these things we got by prayer, by intense pain. Some of these revelations we are sharing with you, it comes from intense pain. But I want to tell you the importance of recognizing each other's sacrifice. It's so, so important. If your husband huh, leaves work from, four, uh, from eight hours and come home and sweep the house for you while you're home, help you cook and all that stuff, say, honey, I thank you for the work that you've done. That is recognizing each other's sacrifices. If your wife 
after work comes home both of you have gone to work now we live in the era where both work if both of you have gone to work and you come home and you sit and your wife is in the kitchen still cooking for you in the heat and taking care of the kids and all that stuff you have to recognize her walk up to her in the kitchen and say honey before the food is even prepared say honey i appreciate what you're doing i know that you've gone to work but i appreciate what you're doing right now for me by coming leaving your your work uh coming home you're tired you can be resting but you're quick and i thank you it's a recognition of sacrifice when you do that you boost them up it's not everything that you can buy flowers for and most of the the bitterness in the heart of of women most of the bitterness in the heart of men it comes because we don't recognize each other's sacrifices if you want to go ahead and share please share we don't recognize each other's sacrifice we are we we always even if the holy spirit incline in your ear tell your husband you love him you don't even want to say it a man that you sleep with that have kids with how come you are you find it difficult to tell them that you love them it is satanic a woman that you sleep with impregnant and all that stuff you how come you can't tell her that you love her it is satanic if you can go to church and lift your hands and say oh lord jesus christ i love you i cherish you i honor you but at home you don't love your wife you don't cherish your wife at home you don't love your husband you don't cherish your husband how can it work it will not work some of these things is come by wisdom we must have wisdom and apply principles unto it so recognize each other's sacrifice even if it is a minor thing saying thank you it will not take away your life it will not take away integrity it will not take away honor it doesn't do anything and also the word i'm sorry if you recognize that you should have done something but you didn't do it tell the person you are sorry you know, Bernard Adams says something. He said, in this life, you are going to be a fool for somebody, whether you like it or not. And so, in this life, I choose to be a fool for this man. And in this life, he chooses to, to be a fool for me. So, there are times where, just for the peace, for peace to happen, he will say, I'm sorry, honey. And I will say, I'm sorry. Though we feel like, you know, it's wrong. That is sacrifice. You understand? That is sacrifice. When in the times when you say sorry, even when you know that you are not the one that is at fault, mm -hmm. but because you want peace, because that is sacrifice, you 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 kill your pride. You you know the killing of pride. It is important in marriage. So you can't go into marriage just um not wanting to appreciate one another. You don't have to only wait till uh um. Uh, Valentine's Day to appreciate them. No. If your wife has gone through nine months of pregnancy and giving birth, every day you must thank her for carrying that child because it's not in your belly, gentlemen. It's not. It's tough. I remember when I was pregnant the first time, I, I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. I was vomiting. I couldn't drink water. I was puking and vomiting. I was always sick. But my husband, he was so gentle. Sometimes he would leave work to stay home, to wash the dishes, to clean. He would come and, and give me stuff to, to puke in, to, you know. And he did all these things. And you say, honey, I thank you. I, I appreciate what you're going through, what you're doing. I remember when I had the miscarriage. I, I want to share that because I want to be as honest. Because most of you have been honest with me and shared the problems that you're going through. So I want to be as honest as possible. You understand? I remember when I went through the miscarriage and he was at the hospital. When I woke up, because uh, if you have watched my other videos, I shared that we went to a miscarriage and they give you that pill to take. But when I took it, it didn't help. I was having uh, almost like a heart attack. I went to the hospital. They said we have to do emergency DNA and take the baby out of you because the medicine is not is reacting terribly. So when we did the surgery, when I woke up and he was there holding my hand, even before I woke up, he was there just clinging to my hand, clinging to my hand after I woke up. And he said, he looked at me and said, I just started crying and I can see the look in his face. The sympathy. I will never forget. And anytime time he upsets me, some of these things, I focus on them to let me really know that he loves me. I can never forget. And I will go into Philippians 4, 8, which talks about whatever is good. Baby, can you pull that up for me? Whatever is good, whatever is noble. I remember and the look in his eyes. And the first thing he says to me is like, we will never have sex again. 
<laughs> because if we have sex, then we'll get pregnant. <laughs> and then the chances of this happening again, and he doesn't want me to go through this again. And so he felt as though the only way for me to never experience the pain that I'm in or the pain that he's in is that we never have sex again. So that's the first thing he said is that I, we will never have sex again. <laughs> <laughs> but I know when he said that, he said that out of anguish. He felt like that is what he could do to, to take away the pain that I'm going through. And I believe that when he did that, that was a, a way of him sacrificing. You understand? Marriage is a journey of sacrifices. And in this life, you're going to be a fool for somebody. If you are not a fool for, for your husband, you're going to be a fool for your boss. You're going to be a fool for somebody. Choose to be a fool for your husband. And husbands, choose to be a fool for your wives. And I remember when he said, but of course that didn't happen because we, we're going on and had another child, <laughs> our, our last baby. But it is so important that you recognize each other's sacrifices. It is so important that you are there for one another. You know, the job, you, you, like what I'm saying, some of you, you, you sacrifice your wives and your husbands for your jobs and for your ministries. But I want to address to you now that you will retire from ministry and you will still be married. You will retire from being a doctor and you will still be married. You will retire from being a lawyer and you will still be married. You will retire from the things that you're doing and you will still be married. So your marriage must be first and foremost. Never sacrifice your family. Never sacrifice them. You must always work with them. And the Lord Jesus Christ, if you ask him for wisdom, he will give you. Paul said, the, Jesus Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And that is why this journey of marriage, you cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it without Christ. You have to do it with Christ. You have to do it with, 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 with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit giving you wisdom. I tell you, all the marriage uh, 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 videos that we've done, I tell you that I cannot be married with without the Holy Spirit. He's with me. I employed the Holy Spirit from day one because before we married, I was told that I can never marry and people were looking for a marriage to collapse because my husband is gentle and I'm like a horse on, on, on with fire all around me. Just, you know, <laughs> but I employed the Holy Spirit and he has helped me. I've never had to change. I am the way I am, but the Lord has given my husband the patience, the wisdom to deal with me. The Lord has given me the wisdom, the patience to deal with my husband. So it's important that we recognize each other's sacrifice. You have to. If your husband does something for you, you have to let him know that you appreciate it. Even today, he could be at work. He has two offices where he's needed and he owns a radio station. But today... I, he asked me, I said, honey, I want you to be home. There are people calling him. There were meetings he canceled so that I can have him today. And so today I said, honey, I thank you for the sacrifice. You've sacrificed today for me. I appreciate it. I really do. Because, uh, you know, I, and I was like, give, to, give me today. You know, I kind of cornered him. I pressured him. And, you know, I... <laughs> I, I like, oh, you know, this whole six years, you haven't really done anything, but he's done so much. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Fine. I will sacrifice. And he did all that. And he sacrificed and he's here with me so that we can, because most of you have spoken to me about, you know, your marriages and you want to know how our marriage is going. So I employed him and I told him and he stayed. And so I appreciate that. And so I want to thank you for giving up your time. I know how much money you're losing, even just being here with me in this hour. And so I appreciate it so much. You understand? But it's important that you recognize it. You understand? When I said that right now, did it take any years away from me? No. Did it take any pride away from me? No. Did it take anything away from me? No. But if I have gone that day and not appreciating what he's doing for me right now, it could be something in his heart. Because it's great what he's sacrificing for me. Cancel me, that stuff. And just because I'm his wife, he doesn't have to do anything. You know, people don't have to do anything for you. It is by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and by the wisdom of God that causes people to favor you and do all these things. So appreciate your husband. Appreciate your wife. If they do something, even if it's a tiny little thing, appreciate them and let them know how much you appreciate it. Say you thank you and make a habit of it. Honoring each other's sacrifices because this is a journey 
that you guys are going into a uh, to one of you die. One of you die. Oh, you both die. Oh, you both die. <laughs> Some people don't, yeah, yeah. don't divorce, don't marry again. They yeah, just, some of you don't marry again. Just and you stay, know the other thing, stay. the other thing that is very, very important that you want to go ahead and you want to divorce and all that stuff. But you know that even when David married Bathsheba, the Lord was still referring to Bathsheba as Uriah's wife. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. That some of you, because of the fact that your pride and your arrogance, you don't want to, you don't want to let go of the pride and the arrogance, and so you want to go ahead and marry somebody else. Mm -hmm. Do you know that even when Uriah died, huh? Jesus, God was still referring to Bathsheba as Uriah's wife, even though he was the wife of David. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? And it was because of that David's kingdom fell apart. So God loves marriage. The Bible says that God hates divorce. He hates sin and he hates divorce. So don't me this marriage. I am in it to the end. It's not going anywhere. So if we decide to torture each other, we'll both be suffering. So we must well be kind to one another. And now I must well humble myself to my husband. And I must well be a fool for him. Because in this life, I've realized that you're going to be a fool for somebody. So on this day, choose to be a fool for your husband. Choose to be a fool for your wife. And fight for your marriage. I choose to be a fool for my husband. I choose. I know that in this era, in the era of feminism and all that stuff, and I'm a feminist woman. I'm a very strong world woman. Nobody has to tell you to tell, but I call my husband Mira. I call him Mira. Am I lying? I call him Mira. He's my lord. Mira. And when I say that, I know that it helps him be the king that he is. It helps him be the shelter over me, the covering. Whether you like it or not, even if your husband is, is, an, is a, a drunkard, he's your lord. He's master over you. There is nothing you can do about that fact. If you don't choose to address him that, that, in that manner, doesn't take away the fact that he is master of your life. If you don't choose to address your husband as your Lord, as your master, and see him as your master, doesn't mean that that situation goes away. Oh. It's still the same. You can be cheating on him. He is still your Lord. You can think that he's worth nothing and he's nothing for you. He is still your Lord. He is still your master. He is still the umbrella over your life. Whether you like it or not, it does not change. That fact does not change. He is still the Lord over you. Just as Christ is the Lord of the church. And if you choose to recognize the church, as if the church doesn't choose to recognize Jesus Christ as his Lord, is still the Lord. You know why? Because he died for the church. And God has given the church to him as his wife. So the church, whether we like it or not, Jesus Christ is our Lord in the same manner. When your husband and your wife take each other's hand and you put these rings on your hand, that man is your Lord. He is your master. Even if you choose not to address him as such. My sister, even if you think you are Olga, even if you think you make more money than him, as long as you are in Christ, as long as you are a Christian, your husband is still your master and your Lord. And in the same way, you won't treat any master or any lord. You understand the same. You know, the reason why I call my husband my lord, you know, let me tell you this. is because I, when I say that to him, I understand the, the implication, what I am referring to him as. Just like if I call somebody foolish, or if I call somebody ojai, I'm trying to let them know who they are you, you get my point if i call somebody a child i'm trying to tell them who they are mm -hmm. in the same manner when i call this man my lord i'm trying to tell him who he is if you want to go ahead and share please go ahead and share let it be a blessing go ahead and share it's the same manner i want him to be lord of my life he is the covering over me He's my shepherd. He's Lord, whether I like it or not. And so, 
I call him as such. And because I refer to him as such, the Lord will give him the wisdom to be that person to my life. Some of you, your marriage issues is because of the way you refer to your husband. Akwesi, Akwesi, I've called you, uh, you don't listen. <laughs> Akwesi, Akwesi, was he only born on Sunday? So, 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 probably would all call the husband daddy, but we we'll call a pastor somewhere. You call your pastor never, daddy. It's never even You call your pastor, you call your, but you call your, your Akwesi. Daddy, 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 daddy. Sometimes we haven't even the, met this person. Pers don't even see, met the person. And you're calling them daddy. And the husband you stay in the home with you. You don't even, call him you daddy, but you call your daddy. pastor daddy. It makes no sense. Hmm? It makes no sense. You so, don't call the pastor that you probably you don't know anywhere, probably gave you one prophecy. Prayer, prayer line, gave you one prophecy that is not even coming to pass in your life. Even you call him daddy. Your husband you are home with, with your kids with. You don't want to call him daddy. Even my kids now, they call him Mira. Hmm. When they call him daddy, they call him NS and he doesn't listen. <laughs> They call him Mira. <laughs> Our children refer to him as Mira. And they don't even know what it means. But because mommy said around so much, now they say it. Sometimes it, it's what breaks away things. And I believe that when I prayed and the Holy Spirit told me to call my husband, it was the Holy Spirit who gave me the wisdom, me, myself. When I came into marriage, I keep telling you guys, I was as <laughs> empty-headed as... <laughs> It was the Holy Spirit that told me, call your husband Mira. And I also grew up in the Church of Pentecost. I grew up, so all those teachings, you know, I grew up and, you know, and then growing up, they call your husband Mira or Eja or, you know. So I grew up and he said, listen, do what your aunties was teaching you when you were young and calling your offer Mira and you call your husband Mira. And so that's what I did from the get-go. I called him Mira. The get-go. I've called him Mira. Some of the things that this man does for me, I don't mean to brag. But for me to even come on Facebook to preach to you, you know that he's a preacher himself. He's a more of a prophet than I am. He sees proper than I even see. Me, I see 2020. He sees better. But he can give his Facebook for me. It's not that he doesn't have a word. This man is full of revelations. But he feels as though... I must be do what the Lord wants me to do. He has my best interest in his heart. And he allows me to, to do what I must do. And so, it's a marriage of sacrifice. When I call my husband Mira, it doesn't take away from me. It doesn't make me a fool. It doesn't make me less of a human. I don't understand it. This generation of women, when you know that this is the man you're supposed to marry and you're supposed to... What is the problem with adoning him? Calling him a king? Calling him daddy? Call, what is the problem with it? When you call him... Did, did I... When I just call him Mira, did I tend to become a goat? No. Did I tend to become a goat? Did I become less of a human? No. You will go and you will take, when you marry him, you take your last name off. If you are Ernestina Bonsu and you marry Ernest Opuni, you take Bonsu away and you put Ernestina Opuni. You will take away your last name. Who went make sure you are and you put on his last name. That is okay with you, but you don't want to call your husband Mira. You don't want to refer to him as who he is. It makes no sense. Do you understand? I, I hope you're listening, women. I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. You take off your last name. The parents who born you, gave birth to you nine months, took care of you while to becoming the doctor you become. Once you marry, you are okay with taking off the last name of who makes you who you are and putting on your husband's last name. But you don't want to refer to him as who he is, which is your Lord. Mm -hmm. Who is your king or wager? You don't want to do that. But you are okay. It's like saying the color is red, but it's not. It, 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 it makes no sense. And because of these little, little things, now divorce rate in marriage in, in the church is, is higher than that in the world. Mm -hmm. Divorce rate in the church is higher than that that is in the world. Yes. 
because in the world they don't even they just do it they don't even complain about it they just say now i have so much and so you are okay with taking his last name but you don't want to, if you take somebody's last name just as if i go and work for for a uh, uh, chase bank and I, I am a representative of Chase. Chase is master over me when I enter that building. And you can refer to your boss as boss. But your husband is your boss. Because you take upon his last name. Hmm. But you don't want to refer to him as such. You insult him. You're okay with insulting a covering over you. And sometimes these things can happen when you're upset, but even you have to apologize. Let me, let me, can I talk mm. something? Can I, I don't want to interfere. Mm. Um, when, when a woman insults a man, there is something that it does to him. Um, and I mean, you can go outside, any woman can insult you, but there is nobody that insults you that caused much damage to you as a man. It's your wife than your wife because your home as a king as a man is your kingdom is the only place that you have complete dominion mm -hmm. over now if your wife does not respect you or put you at a place where you desire to be or you have to be it affects your self image of yourself how mm. you see yourself mm. as a man mm. it affects you Mm. And before you set out outside, in your mindset, you are already a defeated foe. You are already a defeated person. A man that is honored in his home. A man that is appreciated in his home. A man that is pampered or encouraged at home. He, is, he can go to the moon and bring down the stars and the moon and bring it home. Why? Because he knows that because I am, I'm, I'm living a place where everybody sees me as a conqueror. It does something to your psychic, which, mm -hmm. which nothing mm -hmm. can replace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing can replace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, women, as much as possible, learn mm -hmm. as much as possible. To build up your Let's build up, build up our men. Let's build up our men. Let's build up our men. Even though he is not at the place you want him to be. Mm -hmm. There is something that we call casting, vision casting. There is something we call vision casting. There are people, there is one, there are ways which you can, you can have people be whoever they want to be. Mm -hmm. You can fight them, right? You can fight them. Say, for example, I want my wife to be a nurse. Okay, I want my wife to be a nurse. And I come home every day. And I'll tell her how horrible she is a person. How, how worth, worthless she yes. is being who she is as a teacher, trained teacher. I can speak all that and tear her down. And I'll tell her, you know, your wife life could be better if you were a nurse. Your wife, why, why are you living such a hopeless life? Another way of doing, of wanting that person to be who you want them to be is... Calling them by that thing. Right. Right. So powerful. Calling them by that thing. It's so true. And that is how faith works. Mm -hmm. The faith we say so we call things that are not, not as if they yeah. were and they become yes. that thing. Hallelujah. There is power in our mouth. There is power in our words. There is power in the things that we confess and the things that we say. Yeah. Concerning the people around us, concerning our children, concerning our families, and right. even concerning things that are happening on, in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I want my wife to be a woman of God, I start calling her by that name. Mm -hmm. If I want my, as a woman, I want my husband to be a man of God, to be a rich man, to, to, be, to be successful. I start calling him by that name. Mm -hmm. When my wife calls me my Lord, in me, I, refer, I see it as a responsibility. Mm. Nobody walk around carrying the name of a sergeant, a king, a governor, a president without fulfilling the duties of that of that powerful. name that is conferred that on is them powerful. as a woman if you start calling your wife your husband your lord maybe if you start calling him my lord that is 
<laughs> as someone and the way he look at you and the way he looks at other women outside it will change it will change it may change why because on number one she and akra kitwebi a younger girl be ah oh don't she don't know this person anyhow treats him in a way call him in a way act to him in a way that girl that is an assistant to him at that workplace that even know how to put herself together call and answer him in a way that his wife don't even answer when he calls her and as such he starts having certain thoughts mm -hmm. certain ideas certain certain things about this person which he never had had from you as a wife mm, that's powerful truthful and very powerful so my my, my sister mm -hmm. i i beg of you mm. by the mercies of god that learn Learn if there is anything, learn to call your husband and your man who you want him to be. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. If you want him to be a boxer, start calling him Bukom Banku Boxer. <laughs> Hallelujah. He will come with a, with a punch in the in the in the in the fist, a fist in the garment and come punch you. But if you have, want to enjoy your relationship, want to enjoy your marriage, want to have a fruitful marriage, my sister, mm -hmm. start calling that man the way you want him to be. Mm. And, and I like what he's saying. Is that What he's saying is that whatever you want out of him is what you get, you pull out. You understand? I want to read Philippians chapter 4. I want to read Philippians chapter 4. It says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for. Listen to the way Paul talks about. And this is a scripture that he writes to his brothers and sisters. But I believe in companionship, people that he work with. And marriage is something that you work with somebody. Mm -hmm. But so pay attention as you're reading this. Think of it as reading it to your husband or your wife. He says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord this way, dear friends. I plead with you, dear, and I plead with Saint tired to be the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you, my true companion, help these women. They have contented at my side at the cause of the gospel. When you read verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord. I, I uh, always I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The mm. Lord is near. Be yes. anxious about nothing. But in every situation. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody is going through great marriages. There are some people that, that there's lack of understanding. You know, I, the thing about marriage is that you have your, your family with divorce fighting your marriage because they know that if your marriage succeeds, it will bring purpose. You understand what I'm saying? You have generational cases fighting your marriage. You have background, your in-laws, you know, witches and your family is fighting your marriage. And, and you know, some of you, you've, you've tried, you know, you've gone through miscarriage upon miscarriage. You're tired. You, you know, you've gone through, your husband is not really even there for you. You're trying to get pregnant. You can't get pregnant. You guys are trying, you're trying, you're trying, you're tired. I want to address those people. Those people, the man you married, it just doesn't seem like this is the man that, Lord, I want to spend the time with. Paul is telling you here, rejoice in the Lord, always. Meaning that you can't do it without the Lord. If you are at the point where you are at your breaking end, he doesn't say rejoice in your husband. Now, if your husband is in your life where you can't rejoice in him, now rejoice in the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is why it's very, very important that you recognize the Lord in your marriage. You can't go and stand in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. in whose name you marry, and then you take him out. And the reason why God allows us to stand in front of him to marry, because he knows you're going to need him. It's not always going to be smooth. It's not always going to be smooth. You're not always going to get what you want in the marriage. It's not always going to be, you know, it's a journey, ups and down, ups and down. So when it comes to time where your husband, the one or your wife, the one in your marriage is not so forgiven, is not so gentle, speaks at you terribly. The Bible says, now rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4.4, 4, I say it again. Paul says, I will say it again. Rejoice. Mm -hmm. Let your gentleness be evident to know the Lord is near. says, be, be not anxious of nothing. Don't worry about anything. 
Because once you begin to worry, it makes the situation worse. But in every situation, every situation, in every situation, in a situation where the, 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 the man is not who he's supposed to be, he beats you, he threatens to beat you, he insults you, he brings you down. It's like it's like you're married to Satan. That's sometimes that's a, it feels like you're married to Satan. He doesn't want to touch you, he doesn't respect you. You cook for me. It seems like he sees other women outside whom you are even more prettier than. He says, in end that those situations, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace. You know, the thing about peace, people always think that peace only, your peace is when marriage is smooth. That's not peace. Peace is only evident when you are in the midst of trials and tribulations. But you have joy. That is peace. Right now, things are going great in my husband and our life. So we are not experiencing peace. Baby is crying. We are not experiencing peace. Peace only comes, my our son is crying, so peace only comes when you have problems, when things are not the way it's supposed to be. Everybody in your marriage, in your life, in your family, they married and they've had kids, except you. What is going on? You've tried, you lose the baby. You've tried, you lose the baby. But you have joy. Why is that? Because the peace of God is there. You are in the midst of trials. Just like Jesus in the boat, Mark 4, 435. The Bible says that the, the waters, the wind was blowing. And it was as if the boat was about to sink. But Jesus Christ was asleep. While the disciples were running around, they didn't know what to do. They were yelling, oh my God, we're going to die. But Jesus was asleep. Why? Because Jesus was exhibiting peace. And Paul is saying here, do not be anxious of nothing, but with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. And the peace. And so you keep praying. You keep praying. Even if the answer doesn't come, peace will come. You keep making your request known unto the Lord. And the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart and minds. Will guide your heart and minds. Once you pray and you make your request to God with thanksgiving, the peace of God will come first to guide your mind. The peace of God which transcends all understanding. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. What Paul is trying to say here is that the peace that you will have, it makes no sense. For somebody whose, whose husband is sick and almost at the point of death, Whose husband is sick and at the point of death, you still have joy to, 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 to worship God. For somebody whose husband, whose wife and, and, and your husband is beating you day and night, you are afraid of it, you don't know what to do, yet you still have joy. That is peace that surpasses understanding. It blows the mind of men and women. It blows the mind of anybody that is flesh because... It makes no sense why this sister should have peace. It makes no sense why this sister should smile. That is peace that surpasses all understanding. And Paul is saying that be anxious of nothing. But if you recognize that the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God has the ability, the potency to change your situation. And you go to him. I feel the fire of God. And if you go to him... He will give you peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding. And that peace will guide your heart. And it will guide your mind. It will guide your heart and it will guide your mind. The Bible says that the mind, uh, 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 said the mind is the battleground of, 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 of hell and heaven. That is where it is problems the thoughts everything it comes in the mind but paul is saying that the peace of god that will come in will not only guide your heart but it will also guide your mind so it is important to recognize christ in your marriage 
It is so important to recognize Christ in your marriage daily. And that is why some of you, I say, please, don't wait till you get into problems before you start praying. Oh. Because one thing that the devil hates more is marriage. The devil want, attacks marriages more than he even attacks the church. Because he knows if marriages break up, the church will break up. Church is formed of families. The church of God is, 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 is formed by families. So the devil knows that if I break up homes, if I break up marriages, the church will destroy. So sometimes he goes to attack the church by attacking marriages. So you need Jesus Christ. You need the Holy Spirit. But if you're going through problems, you're going through trials, no man can help you. It's only Jesus Christ who put the marriage together. He's the third person in the marriage. He's the one to fix it. And you call on him. Paul said in uh, Philippians 4, 6, he says, Be anxious of nothing, but with every, uh, with supplication, uh, with, with, in every situation, with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto him. And the peace of God that surpasses understanding. It's almost like a testimony. Why is it that you're smiling? Meanwhile, you just, you, you, you just had uh, carried the baby for nine months and lost the baby. Meanwhile, we just heard that your husband is cheating on you with another young girl. Why are you still smiling? Meanwhile, we just heard that your wife is sleeping with another person. Meanwhile, we just heard that your wife is doing this, your wife is doing that. Why are you smiling? Meanwhile, we just heard that you guys are homeless and that you're sleeping with somebody. Why are you still smiling when you've been married for 10 years and there's no baby? Why are you still smiling? That is the peace of God that surpasses understanding. That will guide your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what I have to tell you. The word of God. To stay on the word of God. And keep some of us. We talk to people too much. Talk to God. Spend your time. Remember to God. There is no need for you to go and share negative things about your. You know. Unless the person is praying for you. Unless you trust the person to pray for you. But if you don't trust the person to pray for you, there's no need for you to go and share your, the, 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 the uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, uncover the nakedness of your husband or your wife to other people. No. What does the First Corinthians 13 say? Mommy, put First Corinthians 13. He says, love protects. Love protects. Some learn to protect the, the nakedness of your husband and your wife. It's only you that your husband has. So you go and you tell everybody. There's a sister. We, my husband and I met what well, because she was filled with so much sorrow. My husband and I met her at the store. She was telling us how her husband is so horrible. And we went on and we prayed for her. But what if we were people that were not prayerful? Huh? What if we were people that were not prayerful? We have to discern. If you should, of course inquire and share others your trouble but make sure that the person that you're talking to have the wisdom and the discernment to know that this person is for you and not against you and is only going to make sure the marriage grows sometimes the marriage fall apart by who we go to seek counsel from so we must also learn that the other thing that i want to focus on the last and then my husband will come and will pray for some people verse 8 i love so much he says finally Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. When Paul wrote this scripture, was he saying that they are not terrible things? Yes, they are. Even if you read the entire Philippians 4, it, can, it, it almost as if the Paul was in prison or something. I haven't read the background of it. But he says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, I don't care how satanic your husband is. I don't care how satanic your wife is. There is something noble about them. I don't care how satanic your husband and your wife are. I don't care if they're the deputy devil. There is always something good about them. There is something lovely about them. There is something admirable about them. The Paul said, if anything is excellent, 
if anything at all, if anything is excellent about this person, and anything is praiseworthy about this person, think about such things. Focus on such things. So the man that is probably an alcoholic comes home drunk, does all these terrible things to you, you know, and you're praying to God for transformation and for change. Maybe he helps you with the case when he's in the right mind. Maybe he makes sure that the house, there's nothing lacking. Focus on such things. Focus on such things. Even if your husband is 90% demonic and 10% right. My sister, my brother, as you are waiting on God, and I feel like Paul, he even arranged these scriptures. As you are praying and giving your supplication unto God, as you are praying and giving your supplication unto Jesus Christ, we thank God, as we are giving your supplication unto God, as you are giving your praying and asking God, and the peace of God has come. Paul saying, now, though things are terrible, choose to focus on the good. Choose to focus on anything, even if it's 1% and 99 wrong. Choose to focus on the 1%. My sister, my brother, it is better. Unless this person is beating you unto death and, and so, then run from him. I don't encourage uh, uh, abuse, violence in marriage. Run from him. Take away. Run. If your wife is threatening to poison you and, and doing all sorts of things... There's no need for you to stay in a marriage and die. No. Call law enforcement. Get other people involved and stay away. I'm talking about problems and situations that are maybe out of your control but you can deal with. There is no need for you to stay in a marriage with a man that beats you onto the point of death, onto consciousness. This person is demonic and you have to stay away from them. If there's anyone going through abuse, I beg of you, in the name of God, that is not what God wants for you. That is not a covering. That is a breaking. Your husband is supposed to be your covering. He's not supposed to be your breaker. If he's beating you at the point of death and inflicting sorrows and pain onto your children, because these things is not only for you, for your for you, for you. The afflictions of, of beating your wife, it goes into your children. You have to take your children and go back to your family home. Run away from him. But I'm talking about problems of, 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 of such kind that you both can deal with. And if you're praying about these things, the Bible says if anything is excellent, if anything is praiseworthy, if there's 1% about these people, think about those things. Maybe your marriage, everything is in the force. Everything is terrible. Every day something is happening. It's like this union is a union of hell. It feels like hell. The union feels like hell, Ankasa. But maybe it's only when you guys are sitting and eating together you get joy. Maybe it's when you guys are praying together you get joy. Focus on that. Anything that is good, the devil will definitely attack it. My sister, my brother. The devil would definitely attack it. Anything that is good, the devil would certainly attack it. But these are things that me, I am doing in my marriage as a wife that is helping me. It's brought me peace in the marriage. It's brought me joy. And though I've gone through terrible times, and with marriage, you don't know. Maybe when you're caught in everything is so pure, everything is so perfect, everything is so excellent, everything is so joyous. But you go into the marriage and you realize, Hey, Yehovah. And you just want to run. Marriage is not as before you start. And some of you that are married now, you know. And some of you, I told you that I, I didn't know how to even marry into my third year. So men have patience. And women have patience with one another. Sacrifice with, for one another. You understand? That's very, very important. Recognizing each other's sacrifice. I can't say that enough. It has helped me greatly in my marriage. Recognizing each other's sacrifice. 
and you know the background that you come from my husband he comes from the background in ghana where the men were not affectionate with their women so for him to open his mouth to say that he loves me you know he didn't grow not that he's a he's not a terrible man he's a very nice gentle kind-hearted man but he had issues professing his love like saying i love you and all those things because he comes from a background that where those things you don't they don't say them or bring him flowers i remember one time that we had a fight <laughs> and he brought me flowers he'd gone to myers and he flowers that he bought <laughs> he's laughing <laughs> Like I think he went to the store. He didn't know which flower because so there was a two two ninety nine. You know the one rose. You know the flowers that people sell, and you know everybody has bought the proper one. But then there's one that is Are you less. Telling them about my flowers. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> the you know it was that one flower that everybody had left. Everybody has taken the good ones except that one. It was like two ninety nine. On, on tag on the flower and it's like a thing around it and so he knocks at the door and he i open the door and here he is with the with the with the maya bag maya politan bag <laughs> with the 299 on the flower and the flower he's like here <laughs> <laughs> and i'm looking at him and i'm like oh lord jesus <laughs> oh lord jesus and at that time we were quoting yeah and we had had a fight <laughs> and he brought this two ninety dollar ninety nine cent two forty nine it was on sale <laughs> it was even on sale yeah, yeah. though it was one rose and some of the roses around there you know roses is red but if it becomes like it's dying it becomes brown it around brown. and some of them had turned brown <laughs> And he came, he didn't even take the, 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 the rubber around it with the, with the tag. At least take the rubber and the tag away from it. He didn't take it away and he came with it with a polythene bag and he was making ch 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 noise. He's like, yeah. He didn't even say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He didn't say anything. He said, yeah. And he gives it and then he runs off to work. Nothing. <laughs> So I take them. I'm even in shock. I'm even in shock. I'm just, I'm in shock. I'm, I don't understand. I close the door and I open the door. I'm thinking he's probably outside trying to come up with the. He, in fact, he has gotten in, in his car and he has left. <laughs> he thinks he has done something. Ah, man, he's, he's done a good thing. And I just, I just laughed. You know, he's not, he wasn't romantic. My husband, I'll tell you. If you're going to marriage and you have somebody, you're married to a man who, he's not on, off the top of his mind. Me, I, I'm a reader, I'm a teacher, I love to read, so I read Victorian novels, I read uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, and all that stuff. So I went into marriage expecting him to be, you know, writing letters of love and, you know, giving me, I love chick flicks, I love, but he's not like that. He's the type of man. If there's no food at the house, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., he will get up and go and get the food. He'll take out the trash. He will, if I come home, I'm cleaning, and he comes home, he helps me clean. He helps me, I, I'm, I'm telling you. And, and I remember when I gave birth. I, the I, waking up at night, I will feed the baby, and I wake up at night to feed the baby. He's like, you know what, pump. Could just go and get it. He's like, go and pump. He would tell me, pump, and he began to feed the children every night. My first, our daughter, Eliana, he fed her every night, and he would wake up in the, in, uh, uh, in the morning and go to work while I was home with the kids, but he would let me sleep. And with our three kids, that's what he's been doing. He feeds them at night. Every child I've had, immediately I come home, he feeds them at night. He does all these things to help me. But naturally, he wasn't romantic. Now he comes around, he says, I love you. But when he says it, he means it. Even one time lately, he said, I love you when he was leaving. And he left, he was in the car. <laughs> he came back and he said, I love you. It was so strange. I was like, well, as for this, I love you. It was Jesus that told you to come and say it to me. It's Jesus that is talking through you. It's not you. <laughs> But he is such a loving man. He, he is a genuine man. He's a man who is really concerned 
about me and he helps me around the house. So if you are somebody, you're bringing him in. Yeah, let's put him in. <laughs> if you are somebody that you recognize that your husband is kind to you, but maybe vocally he's not able to express or write you letters or, or don't take off. <laughs> Go ahead. He's not somebody that doesn't recognize you and take uh, guys. That is our son, yeah. <laughs> just making so much noise Same in the way. background, <laughs> and he's the one that recognizes you and does all these things. Then you. <laughs> it's okay. It's so okay. He's the one that anybody that's looking for a child, I pray that the Lord give him to you in the name of <laughs> Jesus. May the Lord give you the child in Jesus' name. But if he does all these things, recognize those things. Amen. Focus on them. Amen. 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 Focus on them. Amen. Focus on these things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We gotta Maybe, you have, to, you have to take your son. You have to, no, let's no, 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 no. Take him away, please. We I need beg the, you. Nobody I is saying I can't so concentrate. Can't. And he's break, breaking the breeze. I beg you. Okay. Take him away. Amen. Say bye bye. Amen. 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 Take him away, baby, please. Okay, Let me okay. finish. Oh, be Say back. bye, guys. Bye bye. <laughs> but he's someone that recognizes and, and he's willing to do everything to help me. But he's not comfortable. So I've stopped focusing on him, one, waiting for him to write me letters. I know he's gone, come a long way with, with buying flowers and doing things. But focus on the things that are good. Focus on the things that brings out the best in him. And I realized that my husband is very kind-hearted. He does everything for me. Everything that I need. Even sometimes he'll be in the meeting and I say, Honey, come home and take care of this boy because he's so strong old and doing all these things. He will come right away. You understand? But if he's not coming with flowers every day and so you, you take that, you focus on the... Uh, on the 20 that is missing and you take away the 80 that is given don't do that focus on the things that are good focus on the things that are kind focus on the things even if your husband is a terror of night right now he's a terror he's a terrorist at home there were times in your life where he was good i know it's hard but ask for the grace from God, ask for the wisdom of God for you to help you focus on these things. Maybe there are times where your wife was good to you, but now she's not. She just insults you, she's disrespectful, she's rude to you. Choose to focus on the good while you are praying for her to change. Listen to me. It is only God that can change a person. It's only God that can bring about a change in a man. You understand? It's only God. And so you have to look unto him. Not look unto man. Only Jesus Christ can bring about change. And that is why I'm only here always preaching about Jesus Christ and taking him and reading. You know, some of you, you don't even, you're married, you don't even share the word of God together. It's very bad. You don't share the word of God. You don't pray together. This one is praying in the morning. This one is praying in the evening. How come uh, married people, you are married, but you can't hold hands and pray? All these things is devices of the evil one. You have to recognize them. You lay in bed together. You have sex together. But you don't read the word together. You don't pray together. It makes no sense. You don't even eat together. These are all satanic things. Learn to do those things. You may think that those little things are, 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 are nothing. But trust me. They, they are so much for your marriage. They are so much for your marriage. You have no idea. They help your marriage so much. The little, little things. The little, little things you do. They help your marriage. So please take all this. But these are the things that we've learned. I know that my sister Yab, I thank you so much, Minister Yab, have put all those things there. Recognizing each other's sacrifice day. If any, any your husband or your wife does something for you, Recognize it and, and, and tell them, honey, this thing that you did, I appreciate it. Even if it's going to fetch you water, honey, start from there. Start from there. If you ask for your husband to give you water and he gives you water, say thank you, honey, I appreciate it. If your wife serve you and bring you food at the table, say, honey, I appreciate it. Because you could have had two legs and gone and get it yourself. Tell her that you appreciate it. Appreciate one another. 
also focus on the things that are good. From we took that from uh, Philippians four eight. He says, finally, brothers, whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is excellent, anything that is praiseworthy. Think about those things. Focus on those things. I'm telling you right now, if there are terrible th- times in your marriage, choose to focus on the good things while you are praying. If there are things in your marriage that you want change, Paul says in first, uh, Philippians 4, 6, he says, Be anxious of nothing, but with prayer, with, with, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God that surpasses understanding. That's another point. That pray to God and that he will bring about change. And while the peace of God choose to focus on the good things, choose to focus on the great things. There are some of you watching me right now, you're waiting for to have children. You don't understand why God is delaying. It is not God that is delaying. Some of you are watching me right now. It's a demonic attack. It's a demonic attack to delay you. But all these things, it comes to train you. You know, uh, Paul talks about uh, uh, endurance, giving birth to uh, patience, giving birth to endurance and all those things. Use this time to build yourself up in the Lord. You know, whatever the devil me- meant for evil, God uses it for good. Now, some of you watching me right now, your marriage is in trouble. It's just every aspect of the marriage is terrible. Every aspect of the marriage is terrible. But I will say rejoice in the Lord. As Paul, Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. That is why... You as a person, you must grow in Christ. You must grow in the Lord. My husband, he knows that I don't get my joy from, I get my joy from him, all right. But he knows that me, I come already joyous because I have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, marriage is, as I've learned in the six years, marriage is a thing of sacrifice. It's a, it's a thing that everybody is giving. Everybody is giving. So you yourself, you must build yourself. Iron sharpening iron. You must be iron. You must have a personal relationship as a wife with God. You must have a personal relationship as a wife, as a husband with God. You must have the Holy Spirit, personal intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you must be happy person. You must be a happy person to be able to be a, bring happiness into your marriage. And the last thing I want to share, the Holy Spirit, I thank you. It's something that my pastor shared with me. I remember there was a time, I remember that if you want to go ahead and share, please share. I remember there was a time where a a, a sister of mine had lost her husband. Out of nowhere, I was heartbroken. I cried. I was, I just nearly became depressed. At that time, I was very much on fire for God. And this sister is on fire for God too. You know, and her husband died. I didn't understand. So I was crying and the Lord told me to call this man of God. And I called him. I called him and I was like, Pastor, I don't understand. Why would God allow this man to die? I don't understand. Why would God do that? I'm so broken. And he said, my dear, we can ask God all you want, but God knows the perfect will for us. But I want to address how you feel right now. He said that when somebody is suffering, as a child of Christ, as a child of light, because the word of God says we are the light of the world, you have to bring the person that is suffering into your peace. You must not let the the, the pain, you must not let you be sucked into the pain of that person. You must let the person come into your peace. So when I called him crying, heartbroken, I have been sucked into the pain of the sister. But that is not how it's supposed to be. Because being sucked into the pain of the sister doesn't help her. I must bring her into my peace. You understand what I'm saying? I hope you understand. In the same manner. As a husband, as a wife, when your husband is going through troubles, as a wife, your job is not to be sucked into his pain. You must remain peace. You must be light. One of you must be light. And so you must be, he must be sucked into your light. 
you understand what I'm saying? I hope you understand. If you understand, please thumbs up. Because this is teachings and I, I need feedback. You must be sucked into, he must come into your, so if you are, no, if your husband is going through pain, if your wife is going through pain, you as the child of God, that is the light of the world. You as the child of God, that is light. You must not be sucked into the chaos that the person is experiencing. You must not be sucked into the chaos that the person is going through. You must be able to bring them into your peace. And the only way to do that, my brother and my sister, is to be grounded in Christ. Is to have an intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. There is no way you can do that unless you have a fellowship with Christ. There is no way you can do that. There is somebody that is watching me. Your husband is 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 in in turmoil in his spirit your husband doesn't seem like everything is not going right and you don't know what to do but you must bring him into your peace you must learn to bring him into your peace i will read this scripture john 9 john 1 verse john 1 verse 9 just john 1 verses 9 he says, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The true light that gives light to everyone. If you are in Christ, you also, if Christ lives in you, you are true light. So if your husband is in turmoil, if your husband seems to be in darkness, if your wife seems to be in darkness... What you do as true light, because you, Jesus Christ, is true light, and Jesus Christ dwells in you, lives in you, so you are true light now. You must bring the person into your true light. Just as John is saying that Jesus Christ, being the true light, gives light to everyone who come, who's coming into the world in the same manner. I hope you understand me. So it's not always that when your husband come home upset, when your wife come home upset, you know that this person is looking to insult you because usually when people are going through pain, the person that's closest to them, they try to inflict it on them. You must be light. And the way for you to be light is... If they insult you, you, you don't say nothing. You can tell. If you are light, you can even discern that this person, that the, the anger by which they've entered the house with is not good. You just quiet. Just quiet. If you have a worship song in the house, begin to play it. Because worship songs carry the presence of God. And you can see that the mood would subside. By these little, little things, it helps marriage. You know, it helps marriage. You have to cultivate these little wisdoms. These little wisdoms. And also get closer to people who have married ahead of you. There is no need for somebody that is married for two years to be with friends with somebody married for six months. I'm sorry. Me, all my friends are married 16 years, 20 years, 40 years, 11 years. You know, if I have marriage problems, I don't call, you know, I call the people 10 years. Just as the people that are married two years call on me, that is six. In the same way, I call on those that is 10, 9, 20. Because it's a journey ahead. Why should a person that you, you are married for six, uh, for six years go and consult, seek marriage? But sometimes it's the wisdom of God. Because some of you can come to me right now for, you know, and I'll probably tell you, but the wisdom of God. So if the wisdom of God and the spirit of God is in that person and the that person is leading you, yeah. Because Job even said it that age, wisdom does not equal to age. You can't say that a person is wise by their age. Even Job said that. So wisdom does not equal to age. So I'm sorry. But anybody, anybody that avails themselves, just and you can also go to somebody that is 
thank you holy spirit for correcting me you can also go to somebody that's 10 years marriage but they have nothing better to tell you because <laughs> i know people that have been married for 18 years the things that they are doing in their marriage they have nothing better to teach me that I'm, I'm six years of marriage. So I thank the Holy Spirit for correcting me. Go to people that are spirit-filled. Go to people that are spirit-filled. Don't go to people that have years in marriage. Go to people that are spirit-filled. Spirit-filled people will lead you in a spirit-filled way. Spirit-filled people will lead you in a spirit-filled way. You understand? Go to people that are spirit filled, marriage people that are spirit filled, people that you know will not tell you, you know, unless the person is killing you, will not tell you to go and pack your bags and go, you know, but will tell you to stay and endure, and the Lord will make a way, you know. Anything, hands can change, oh, in marriage is very, very, it's a very thing, hands can change. One time your husband is probably the one making money, the next you are the one that's making money, but in all things, you have to understand that these jobs will fade and your husband will be with you forever. And so you have to learn all these things. But God bless you all. If there's anybody going through marriage problems, 